So, uh, I'm just going to introduce um, some lighting attributes. So we've covered um, how to do a very simple daylight setup and now we're going to look at how to do sort of interiors and nighttime setups. Uh, so I've got this very simple teapot scene. Uh, a teapot is a great object for doing these kinds of tests. And I've got um, just two planes uh, which will help us kind of see what the lights are doing. So let's just move that up a bit and zoom out ever so slightly. Right, so uh, now if you're going to use iRay or you're going to use um, the art renderer, you want to use uh, this, the photometric light system. So we're just going to create the free light and it's going to ask me to add the MR photographic exposure control and this is because I'm in iRay. And yes, we want to do that because otherwise we won't be able to see anything. So um, let's just drop a light in on the ground there and then I'm going to move it up. So, um, this panel here um, controls all the light characteristics and initially we're just going to look at um, this area here and see what it does. So if I just click uh, render now, then we get a super bright white light uh, which is blowing everything out. So let's cancel that. And let's just dial down the intensity to 500 and see what it does. Render again, a bit less. Uh, the other way of doing this is you can go into rendering exposure control. And let's just change that to like 8 EV, I think. Might be good. Do that again. So now I've got something that's a bit better exposed. You can see we have a bright spot uh, which is coming from our point light over here. So let's see what happens when we adjust the emission area. So let's go from spot and we'll go to a disk. And I'm just going to increase the disk size a bit. So you can see we've got these very direct shadows coming from our light source here. So when I change the um, type to disk, you can see we get a very different light profile. So here the light is being emitted from the top and bottom of the disk. And we've got much softer shadows around our teapot. So if I um, maybe just drag this directly over our teapot, we'll get a bit of a better view of that. Um, so I just let the render run on for a bit while I pause the video and you can see we've got some nice um, soft shadows in our environment now. So if I cancel that and um, I'm going to dial the disk size down a bit. So you can see the disk size here in the viewport. Um, and let's just dial it back down to say 0.1. So this will mean that um, these soft shadows in here should become sharper. So let's render that now. So again, I just pause the video a bit while this run on, and you can see we've got a much sharper shadow system down here, and especially over and beneath this little handle on the teapot. So let's cancel that now. And obviously, if we make the disc super big, like uh, two meters, is that gonna be huge? Yeah, like that. But then we'll get crazy soft shadows. So. Um, now we have um, a very diffuse soft light system because of our, uh, let's cancel that, there you go, because our massive light uh, system here we've got a very diffuse um, light on our teapot. Okay so let's look at um, the light distribution type. So I'm going to just dial this down again and turn that into point and drag this over here so it clips through our wall there. Okay, so we can see at the moment we've got this lighting profile. So let's change our um, light distribution type to uniform, uh, uniform diffuse and render again. Uh, so now you can see we've got something that looks like a, um, 
like a spotlight, um, like, or like a pendant light maybe. Um, and you can see essentially that uh, the light is coming out of one side of this hemisphere. Let's pause that, cancel it again. Uh, so let's change the type again to spotlight. And then here you can see we get an actual cone for our light pattern. And I'll still go into that again. And this is more like a, a wall spotlight. And we can adjust um, the hotspot and the fall off so you can create a very wide profile like this. And you can see that just down here at the bottom of the image, if it's, it's not as quite dark, but down here you can see that we're still getting a sharp shadow. So again, we can change the um, Let's choose sphere quite randomly. Oh, no. Disk. And then we can have the spotlight size up like that and get a softer shadow here. Uh, so this is what it's like with the uh, spotlight and the border disk light. Uh, and you can see we've got lots of sparkles. Uh, these in here, these sparkly dots are called fireflies. And, and they can be a pain in the ass to kind of fix. Um, and you can use lots of filtering. Um, or alternatively, you just have to let the render time run on. So that's uh, one of the warnings of using these kind of progressive renderers. They can be really quick, but they can have some issues. Uh, so I'm just going to carry on running through some lighting types. So what's really useful to try is um, some of these um, uh, templates here. Uh, so let's just choose what was quite good. Uh, pendant. There we go. So you can actually see we get this little 3D image. So we have um, uh, a very interesting light profile which is um, measuring um, the light from in all directions around the bulb. So let's just do that now then. And what I think I might just, just dial down the light power a tad um, by going into the exposure controls. Let's put it down to say 2 again. Oops, wrong way. Eight is better. So here's the um, pattern for our pendant. I'll flick over now and let's choose something else so that these web uh, brackets, where it's got brackets web, that's going to give you these um, distribution photometric types. Uh, and you can see there's a little profile here. So you can download, if you go into here, you can download what are called IS formats. And here's a whole bunch of different IS formats which will give you the light profile uh, for each bowl. Uh, so let's choose what's interesting. I think it was this recessed uh, wash. Let's try that. Cool. So there's the um, light profile, or oh, sorry, the lighting for a. 75 watt wall wash light. Um, you can use all this stuff in the art render as well. So we've been running the eye ray renderer, so I can switch that now. So we can go over here and we can choose art renderer. Let's just kick that off. Um, and you can see we get very similar results. So 
So I'm pausing the video as I go to um, allow some of the noise to disappear. Um, I guess what you need to be aware of is this, this is quite a fast machine and um, so these kind of nighttime environments can be quite time consuming to render. Which is why I usually recommend like starting off with daylight scenes because they're usually easier. Because to really make a nighttime interior environment would work, you need to add quite a lot of these um, little point light sources everywhere and that can get really expensive and you will end up rendering overnight for many hours. So um, the other thing you can do with is mess with the color temperature. So that's over here in Kelvin. Or you can do um, use these settings for different effects. So um, by choosing the 100 watt bulb preset, we get a Kelvin value of 2,800, and that gives us this kind of orange light here. Um, so uh, we can mess with that and make things any color we like in fact. Let's do some random mercury or phosphorus mercury and just do that again. And you can see we get a slightly cooler uh, representation of light. Um, you've even got a filter color value so you can just go and, and choose your own color. I think we should stop there because that's 10, 10 minutes or so. Uh, so that's a brief overview of photometric lights, uh, which you want to be using if you're using the iRay or uh, the art renderer.